Okay, look, I know. We, we haven't always gotten along. Fine, whatever. Just for tonight, can we please just put all that aside? Can we make a dish that's not overcooked? Can we do that, please? Stupid chicken. Hey everybody, welcome back to Ken in the Kitchen. My name is Ken, and yes, today I am going to try to cook chicken. Now, obviously, I've cooked chicken before plenty of times, but one of those times I undercooked it, and it will stay with me forever. I don't ever want to taste what I tasted when I put that undercooked chicken in my mouth. So now I habitually overcook my chicken, and that's obviously better than the alternative, but it's not great. So I'm going to try my hand at a recipe today that I, there's a technique, and I know it's probably old hat to anyone who watches cooking shows, but for me, it was, it was a revelation. I think I saw it on America's Test Kitchen. I think that technique is going to help me to not overcook my chicken. So we'll see what happens. Uh, in the meantime, I'll shut up and let's just get into it. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is uh, deviate from the recipe for a bit. I like mushrooms, so I'm going to add those to my sauce. So to do that, obviously, we need to add the mushrooms. Now I'm just going to add about half of this 8-ounce package of mushrooms. Again, this isn't part of the recipe, so if you don't like them, you don't have to include them. I will then rinse the mushrooms off and, you know, get in there, kind of get them good and rinsed, but don't worry about it too much. Shake off the excess liquid, but don't sweat it if you don't get it all off because you're putting them into a microwave safe bowl because you guessed it, they're going into the microwave. So let's go ahead and go across the kitchen to the microwave and we're going to put them in there for about three minutes, which should cook them. I'm going to pre-cook them that way. And the other thing that this does, besides just pre-cooking the mushrooms, is it gets a lot of the liquid out of the mushrooms so it won't end up in your sauce. Look at that liquid. And that means that we're going to put them back into the colander to get the liquid off of them and then back into the microwave safe bowl. I'm just going to set those aside until we need them later. Next, go ahead and chop in half one and a half cups of cherry or grape tomatoes. Next, we'll need three cups of baby spinach. Go ahead and just rinse that off and then set it aside until later. And then there's garlic. I use two teaspoons of pre-chopped garlic. If you use fresh, you're going to need three cloves of fresh garlic. Ooh, and look, Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. Everybody loves the taste of this. At least you do if you can get it out of the package. But once you do, you can start grating it. And the recipe calls for a quarter cup of cheese, but I don't know what that looks like, and I'm certainly not digging out a measuring cup for cheese. So I'll just keep going until I have what I consider to be a Karina amount of cheese on this plate. And that's looking pretty good to me, so I think I will go with that. Oops, this one got away. I guess I'll have to eat him. <laughs> and as far as storing your cheese, we love these cheese storage bags. They work really well. Just remember to label them with the name of the cheese and then the date you put it in the bag. And then you put it in the bag and you can take it out of the wrapper or not. It's up to you. But then you just stick it in the fridge and it lasts for weeks. And believe me, we know because we like cheese. And any sauce worth its sauce needs heavy cream. In this case, one half cup of heavy cream. And here is the technique that I hope will allow me to not overcook my chicken anymore, and that is to butterfly the chicken. Now, I've seen this technique on many cooking shows, and I thought, you know what? This is worth giving it a try. What have I got to lose? The whole idea, of course, is to make the chicken uh, flatter, and so it'll cook quicker and more evenly throughout the breast. And now the fun part, we get to take out our frustration on the chicken. Just pound the crud out of it until it's nice and thin like this. Um, since I butterflied the breasts, I only used two of them. Otherwise, the recipe calls for four. And now we cook. We add one tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil to the pan, and then we lay in the first of our two chicken breasts. Since I butterflied them and pounded them out, I'm only going to cook them for about four minutes on each side. And uh, if you want to flip your chicken, good tip, you need to be smarter than the chicken. Yeah, 
Ken is not smarter than the chicken. And then it's time to take the first chicken breast out and replace it with the second one. Just lay it on in the pan there. This is also a good time to season things with salt and pepper. And I didn't film that on the first chicken breast, so here you go, your salt and pepper shot. And uh, the pepper is really delicious. I'm using kosher salt. If I can find where Karina ordered the pepper online, I will go ahead and put it in the description link down below. So we'll flip the chicken breast and then cook it for about another four minutes. After this is done, we're gonna evacuate it to a plate with the first chicken breast and cover it with foil because it's time to make the sauce. So first we're gonna add three tablespoons or 60 grams of your favorite butter to the pan. Let that melt down and then whatever garlic you chose to use, this is when you add that garlic to the pan. And we're just going to, you know, cook it around for a little bit, just a couple minutes until it starts to be fragrant and you don't want to burn it. So I'm going to go ahead and lower my heat. Generally, you're doing this on medium heat, but again, it depends on your stove. Ours runs hot, so I'm turning it down a little. And just when you think the whole kitchen might burn down, then you can add your tomatoes to the party because, you know, it would be fun if the pan actually spit out flaming butter covered cherry tomato projectiles at you, wouldn't it? I swear, this, this stove has to be at least 30 years old. I think it came with the original apartment and it's always run hot. So I'm gonna nudge the heat down again in an attempt to save the building. And this is also a good time to add some more seasoning, salt and pepper and oregano, the oregano that you forgot to add to the chicken while you were cooking the chicken, even though you had the printed recipe in front of you, Ken. And now it's time to add the spinach finally. We're just gonna go ahead and cram all three cups of the spinach into the pan and we'll stir it around and we're just gonna cook it for a few minutes until it wilts, it gets a little smaller. And now we get to add that half cup of heavy cream and boy, that looks good. And oh, don't forget the Parmesan, you know, the uh, half cup of Parmesan, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more. Yeah, go ahead and add that to the pan. Give everything a good couple of stirs and then add the mushrooms from the beginning of the episode and mix those together in the pan too. We're going to let this cook for a few minutes, maybe three or four, just until the sauce has had time to reduce by about a third. And now the chicken that has, you know, been hiding on a plate under foil for a while, you can bring that out of its hiding spot and put it back in the pan. We're basically just doing this to get the chicken a little warmer, although the foil should have kept it pretty warm, and also to give it the opportunity to baste a little bit in this delicious sauce that we've made. Now, you don't want to go too long because, again, the whole point of this recipe is not to have overcooked chicken. So, And here it is, and I honestly think it came out very good. I didn't overcook it, and I, I did film me cutting into this chicken and holding a bite of the chicken up close to the camera so you could see that I didn't overcook it. However, I don't know what happened to that. I don't know if it did an airdrop or what happened, but uh, anyway, it tasted great. We served it with a side of uh, Tuscan cheese tortelloni. That was really good too. So altogether, very good meal. Quite happy with this. We'll be doing this again for sure. Yes. Okay. I am happy with this. This, this is what chicken should be when you cook it yourself. It was tender. It was juicy. It was not overdone. It wasn't rubbery. That sauce was so flavorful. But one thing I might do differently is adding some Worcestershire because that's usually good in everything. I'll remember to add the oregano at the beginning when I'm supposed to. So that will make the chicken much more flavorful just by following the dumb recipe can. And I might try putting in some red pepper flakes or something for some heat. Cause so that's the only thing I was, I was missing, but it did turn out very good. I feel redemption and it feels good. So that's it. Thank you so much for stopping by. I appreciate you being here on my culinary journey. If you're new here, I do all sorts of weird content on this channel. So there's probably something here for you if you look around long enough. There's uh, stuff on fountain pens, chronic illness pain, 
it's kind of all over the place. If you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and give it a thumbs up if you like the video. And if you know someone who's looking for a flavorful, simple chicken recipe, please share this video with them. Don't forget to follow me over on all my social media channels, especially on Instagram, where I am posting daily updates of the advent calendar chocolates we've been getting this year. And Karina struck gold with these advent calendars she bought us. They are so much fun and the, the chocolate is so pretty as well as delicious. But that's all for now. I appreciate you being here again. Uh, until next time, I'm Ken McKim. You take care.